What's good people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash the like. Hit the bell. Those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload, so just make sure you hit that bell. Anyway guys, today we got a dope episode for you. It's all about how to rehydrate your flowers when it comes to pressing, because we all know dry flowers and pressing is a no-no. Bruh. It's not good. So much so that a lot of people actually opt to press fresh flour instead. Now I've actually done a few videos on tips when it comes to pressing, so definitely check those out so you can improve your final product and your you. Perfect. Now effectively extracting quality rosin from flowers isn't possible without the correct moisture content and humidity levels. Flowers grown in an ideal environment from good genetics can't fully transform into exceptional rosin if they're too dry during extraction. Now I've got some really dry stuff and I tried to press it and I got some super poor results. Sometimes you just gotta try to learn right now excessive dryness in flowers causes decreased rosin yields as bone dry reabsorbs a lot of that rosin that flows through the rosin bag this reabsorption rate is significantly lower than flowers that contain the right amount of moisture so that alone should give you a good reason to maintain the correct moisture in your starting material now that said what's the ideal moisture for pressing flowers and rosin but anywhere between 55 to 65 percent relative humidity or ra is your sweet spot to measure the moisture content and humidity of your flowers you can get yourself little mini hygrometers like this and just pop them in your jars or whatever and that that tells you the RH. So as you can see right now, this is 59% RH. It also tells you the temperature up here as well. So for all you guys who like uh, Fahrenheit, that should work out great for you. So this is definitely a foolproof way to measure the RH. Now how can you tell if your flower is too dry? Flower that's well below the ideal humidity for pressing rosin will feel very brittle and crunchy to the touch. If you roll the flowers between your fingers with any amount of pressure, it breaks into a dust or a powder. Bruh. Any sugar leaves in the flowers will be super crisp and breakable. If you smoke an overly dry flower, it'll taste harsh and it'll leave some irritation on the back of your throat. Trust me, I know. I've gotten some of that stuff and it tastes horrible. I've actually still got it down there. I've just not been able to bring myself to use it. That's how bad things are. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, how do I actually prevent my flowers from becoming overly dry? Well, the best approach to over dryness is prevention. While you can rehydrate your flowers and that's okay for pressing flower that's rehydrated after becoming excessively dry doesn't fully recover to the same level of viability and freshness that it had previous flowers that are dry too quickly immediately after half will often be too dry even for pressing rosin guys in a warm and dry environment with excessive airflow flowers can dry out too quickly instead of evenly losing moisture content over the course of several days you guys know i always say a long slow dry and cure is best don't rush it and another sometimes overlooked error is storing flowers in containers that aren't airtight right. gotta seal them in an airtight jar that preserves the moisture content if not, you can lose all that and it'll dry out super fast. Now there's some pretty dope ways that you can rehydrate your flower because if you find yourself with a batch of quality flowers that are just too dry for pressing, there are a few easy ways that you can salvage that material. Now first off and probably the most popular option is humidity control packets. These two-way packets can restore or remove humidity from the environment in which it's placed. So you can get some 62 degree packs and pop them in and you should be good to go. Another one is fruit. Crazy, I know, but it works. You can use small pieces of lime, orange, or lemon peel or experiment with a combination of all of them and some people have even used chunks of apples swap out the pieces of fruit daily until the desired moisture is reached fruit should not be left in the jars for long-term storage mold will certainly grow and rot can form there as well you don't want that you just want to increase the moisture content now it's important to note guys that using fruit to rehydrate dry flowers can impart new and distinct flavors and aromas and that can be an advantage or a disadvantage to some people out there <laughs> like i remember back Back in the day man i got some bricks the homies used to store bricks in like jars with mangoes and it used to smell so sweet have you ever smelled sweet sweet bricks Bruh. yeah that's from that fruity smell fruit aren't the only thing that you can use you can also use fresh leaves if you have a home grow and the ladies could use some trimming then take some of those fresh leaves and pop them into some of the jars with flowers that'll definitely increase that moisture content in there that's for bone dry flowers guys you don't want to get butter rot if your flowers are fine don't do this personally i've taken trim leaves and try to store them for later use so i just popped them in a jar and closed it up and the whole jar started to sweat Bruh. everything in there started to sweat so the same thing will happen and the moisture content will increase so don't use too many leaves feel it out see how many leaves gives you a good enough increase and work with that now guys number four or five i don't even remember is the paper towel method and this is a little and this is a little bit different from the germination method now there are a couple of variations to this technique the most basic one involves creating little balls or pieces of paper towel so 
soaking them in clean water and placing those damp, not soaking, wet pieces of paper towel at the very bottom of each jar. You can change them out daily, but that's said to increase the RH a little bit in the jars. An even better way to use the paper towel method is to fold a sheet of paper towel in half and then in half again, creating a long multi-layered strip of paper towel and then you soak one half of the strip with clean water and place that half inside of the glass jar containing your flowers. Leave the dry half of the strip outside of the jar and seal the lid. For added humidity control, you can place lettuce pieces or bread on the inside of the jar to accompany the paper towel method, although it's not needed. Now, a lot of people use the paper towel method as their preferred method of rehydration when some extra moisture content is needed, especially with those super bone dry flowers. That can help you get to the right conditions for really pressing that flower. Now, no matter which technique you choose, guys, be sure to keep an eye on the RH and avoid overdoing it. Too much dampness in the jars will lead to mold growth, it'll lead to bud rot, it'll lead to all sorts of stuff that's just not good. Once you've rehydrated your flower, make sure to store it properly so that it maintains the ideal moisture for pressing rosin. For most people, sealed glass jars are the way to go. So as you can see guys, there are many different ways to rehydrate your flower. There are many different reasons you may want to do it. A lot of people do it for pressing, a lot of people do it if it's too dry, they just want to get some more moisture in there. So drop a comment down below and let me know if you guys have used any of these options and if you have, let me know how it's turned out for you. And if you got any other options, drop them in there as well. Because sometimes these can come in super handy. If you got some really nice quality flower that's just too dry, these tips can definitely help you save them and you can get some great uses out of it. So smash the freaking like for that and don't forget to hit the bell. But wait, first, check out this video right here and this video right here and we'll see you on the next one. Peace fam.